Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Joe Palmer begins now. Good evening everyone. We begin with breaking news tonight with the sudden resignation of a long-serving state politician. Glenorchy-based Labor MP Scott Bacon is set to announce he's stepping down from Parliament. Our political reporter Michelle Wisby joins us live now. Good evening Michelle. What do we know so far? Joe, this wasn't how the Labor Party wanted it to be, but it's been sprung late this evening that Scott Bacon is resigning. Our sources say he will make an official announcement tomorrow morning, but we understand this wasn't his or the party's original plan for making it public. We don't know much yet, but Labor is also expected to issue a statement with more details in the near future. Mr Bacon was first elected for the party in 2010, serving the Southern Denison electorate. It's still unclear who would win his seat back if there were a recount. But Joe, it's likely to be either former politician Madeleine Ogilvie or Tim Cox. OK, thank you very much for that report, Michelle. We'll have to wait and see. In other news, a major shake-up is on the way for Tasmania's bureaucracy with a series of musical chairs in three areas. Michael Pervan, the person in charge of the health department, is being moved to community Tasmania. Catherine Morgan Wicks from Justice is taking over his big task with the health system under significant strain. Making it a full circle of changes, Gina Webster from Communities takes over the Justice Department. Gale force winds have wreaked havoc across parts of Tasmania. The past 24 hours seeing damage and destruction, particularly in the state south and west, including a house losing its roof. The roof of this Rosney Hill property was a victim of last night's destructive winds. It was ripped from the house and flung 30 metres across the street into a neighbouring property. I think everyone on the street was over at the neighbours across the road actually um, and our roof had blown off and crashed into their house unfortunately. It ended up damaging two neighbouring properties along with smashing the back window of a car. Ms Oliver says she's grateful no one was seriously injured. We can replace stuff but yeah it was very lucky that no one was out and about. The south and west have copped a battering over the last 24 hours. Western areas saw up to 80 millimetres of rain, while Hobart was lashed with gale force winds. Wind gusts uh, reach 120 kilometres per hour in Hobart, which was the strongest wind gust Hobart's had for around five and a half years. At Conningham, the strong gusts brought down numerous trees and power lines, with dozens of households affected. TAS networks and SES crews worked overtime to clear the area. A bit clean up, yes. But we're getting there, slow but sure. Those flying into Hobart were also greeted with a bumpy ride, the strong winds making landing at the airport an interesting experience. Just as we're coming in, yeah, just more than usual. A little bit bumpy, but uh, as to, was to be expected, I'd looked on the uh, bomb weather. And for the latest on the conditions, John Hunt joins us live in Hobart. John, good evening. What's it like outside at the moment? Well, Joe, it's just started raining, but it remains relatively calm. However, it's not expected to stay that way. We're expecting conditions to worsen throughout the evening as a cold front bears down on the state. Some areas can expect wind gusts of up to 100 kilometres an hour, while snow could fall at 400 metres. But, Joe, after a wild night, we're expecting conditions to ease tomorrow morning. Well, that would be good news for the morning. Thanks so much for that. John Hunt joining us there. A court has heard of deficiencies in the state's mental health services for prisoners as a coronial inquest continues to investigate the shocking death of Viola Delios. Expert witnesses have told a coroner resourcing to the sector is lacking and changes should be made. Riston Prison's capacity to treat inmates with mental illness under scrutiny. The inquest into the shock killing of Vula Delios continuing, focusing on medical options within the facility. The North Hobart shopkeeper was stabbed to death by Daryl Royston Wayne Cook in 2016, the day after he was released from jail. He was later found not guilty on the ground of insanity. The court hearing recommendations from a specialist task force that the health service should make changes to keep up with changing mental health demands. But there's limited resourcing to implement change.
The chief psychiatrist saying there are strains at the moment, so any further would be more strain. The court hearing, despite prison population increases, funding for the Wilfred Lopez Centre for Mental Health has not increased to keep up with demand. Hearing it has 35 beds, but only funding to open 23. The court has previously heard of Mr Cook's long history of abusive behaviour. The head of community corrections admitting things could change when releasing high-risk prisoners, saying, I think we can do better. In court, Mr Cook's prison chaplain said he spoke about unsettling topics and about being a holy soldier. He said he was sometimes unable to visit Mr Cook due to his disruptive behaviour. Saying the day before his release, he didn't make a lot of sense at times and seemed quite anxious about being released. The inquest was adjourned until next month. Michelle Wisby, 7 Tasmania News. Fire crews have saved a Launceston home from destruction after a blaze gutted the front bedroom this afternoon. Two passers-by called triple zero after witnessing smoke from Hobart Road. The Tasmania Fire Service says a number of electrical appliances may have contributed. Just making sure this time of year smoke alarms are activating, electric blankets are off when they're not in use and appliances are turned off at the power point. No one was home during the incident. The Woodbridge Marine Discovery Centre has been granted a new lease on life in time for its 40-year anniversary. The centre reopening today after almost $1 million worth of upgrades, ensuring the centre's continued success for years to come. The Marine Discovery Centre at Woodbridge has been a much-loved student experience during its 40-year history. Its program offering the chance for them to get up close and personal with various marine life, including sharks and crabs, as well as learning about marine events such as bioluminescence. It is so super exciting, like it, being able to walk around and see all this modern, updated stuff with like all this new information. It's just awesome. So this is a fantastic opportunity for students to come and have a really hands-on experience learning about marine science. The ageing facility, the recipient of a much needed facelift with almost one million dollars worth of recent renovations after celebrating its 40 year anniversary. There's been some 200,000 students that have visited this facility over the number of the years that's been open so today's upgrade of some $900,000 just really secures the future of this facility. It was certainly our teaching um, community that come down regularly are really appreciative of the building and the centre and how it's just looking, you know, it's like such a nice facility. It is open for school excursions during term time and to the general public on Monday afternoons. Ebony Ablett, 7 Tasmania News. A 44-year-old prospect man has pleaded not guilty to a string of aggravated burglary and stealing charges. Jason Samuel McCormick fronted Launceston Magistrates Court on more than a dozen charges allegedly related to house break-ins in Maina in the Central Highlands in March and April of this year. The alleged burglaries happened only a month after bushfires ravaged the small lakeside town. Court documents show almost $6,000 worth of goods were stolen. The the case has been adjourned until January next year. Tasmania's football board says the state needs to be ready to jump straight into the national competition if the opportunity arises. With its chairperson Jim Wilkinson fronting up during day two of the parliamentary inquiry into AFL in Tasmania. We've got to be ready uh, if we're called. Uh, there's some talk, as you know, but it won't be before 2025. Uh, but if something happens to one of the clubs for whatever reason, mm. uh, then uh, hopefully we would be ready to say, well, look, what mm. about us? The inquiry wrapped up in Hobart with the findings set to be released in the coming months. A popular Tasmanian tourism pioneer has died at the age of 88. Brian Inder established one of the world's largest mazes, Tasmasia, in 1987 near Lake Barrington, as well as the village of Lower Crackpot. The well-known personality is well remembered for his television advertising. Mr Inder also was instrumental in establishing Sheffield as the town of Mules. Students across the state are celebrating Book Week, bringing story time characters to life. Teachers hope it encourages and inspires kids to read more, with this year's theme being Reading is My Secret Power. 
Imaginations ran wild at Riverside Primary School today as students recreated their favourite book characters. Buzz Lightyear, Cinderella, because she's pretty. Um, an astronaut. Bananas in pyjamas, Spider-Man and even a Minecraft character came to life. Around 700 students dressed up for the special picnic lunch. These children grow up and become adults, they'll always remember, oh, do you remember when I dressed up as? And it's a really great opportunity for them to have those beautiful memories and to be steeped in learning and reading is a fabulous thing. Teachers also took their costumes to the next level. The Grade 2 team, the teachers have all come dressed from um, Alice in Wonderland. Um, I'm obviously the Mad Hatter, we've got Tweedledee and Tweedledum. It wasn't just about dressing up though, there was plenty of reading to be done. Hey there guys, would you like a banana? What's wrong with you, Brian? You're a piranha. It can help with your vocabulary and your imagination. You get to read lots of books. Learning to read is really crucial to all children and it's really a great way to solve problems in the world around us. Even the West Tamar Mayor paid a visit to read a few books to the kids. Book weekends on Friday, but for these kids, the chapter isn't over. We love reading! Letitia Wallace, 7 Tasmanian News. The North Hobart Football Club have added an incentive to finish off the TSL season on a high note as the club prepares to farewell one of its stalwarts. But an informed Clarence outfit are keen to rain on the Dees parade. After more than 150 games for the club, Oli Divinudo will hang up the boots after Friday night's clash against his former side. I've said to the players, you know, you've got to do everything in your power to ensure that we, um, we get a win for Oli and send him off on a good note. Needing a massive and unlikely percentage-boosting win over the Roos to avoid a second straight wooden spoon, Robinson says he's still pleased with where the club's at, regardless of results. You can see there's been improvement. We've been competitive in, you know, most weeks. And while the D's coach says he's confident of retaining the bulk of his list for 2020, the playing future of former Melbourne Demon Cole Garland remains up in the air. That's up to Cole. I mean, Cole's contracted, but it's up to him at the end of the day. So we'll have a chat next week. And um, obviously he's been exceptional for our footy club. Coming off the back of a surprise win over the Tigers, the Clarence boys are chasing a third victory from their past four matches following an up and down season, which saw them attract heavy criticism from outside the club. There's no doubt that that would have dented the confidence of the group. Um, so, yeah, it probably did have some impact. Um, would I change it looking back? No, because I reckon it's made our group tighter right now. We're a lot stronger for it. And despite missing finals footy for the first time in years, Webley is also adamant his current squad is in it for the long haul. I think that the club's in a really good position in the next three or four years. We've got some serious young talent. We've just got to invest in it um, and we'll be OK. To soccer and Tasmania's best talent are readying themselves for the opportunity to match it with some of the A-League's elite with an initial squad of 26 players named in the state representative side to take on the Central Coast Mariners at Darcy Street on September 8. Players feel that um, their efforts throughout the year have been, you know, for something other than just playing in the NPL. There is something at the end of it for them as, um, as Tasmanians. I think they're looking forward to it as well. We went through the nuts and bolts of trying to establish cover for each position so we could play these two sides, one in the first half, one in the second half, and the, the guys were very thorough. The Mariners will also take on Tasmanian NPL club South Hobart at Kingston's Lightwood Park on its September 10. Good evening. Showers consistently fell throughout the west and south of the state today. Launceston and Devonport are high of 13, 12 across Hobart and Burnie. Other centres today are high of 13 across Friendly Beaches, Flinders Island and King Island, 12 at both Smithton and Lowhead, 11 at Strawn and Ouse, 10. On the close-up mid to low-level cloud about the west and south with higher cloud moving across the west of the state through the afternoon. Further out shows cloud covering most of Tasmania, Victoria and southern New South Wales. Mid-level cloud covers north Queensland while the rest of the country is mostly cloud-free. Tomorrow shows a strong south to southwesterly wind flow over Tasmania easing in the afternoon as a ridge of higher pressure crosses the state. Southwesterly winds tomorrow 30 to 45 knots, easing to 15 knots in the west during the morning. Swells up to 7.5 metres in the west and south and up to 2 metres in the north. 
A severe weather warning is current for western, southern, central and eastern Tasmania and the Bass Strait Islands for damaging southwesterly winds in the morning. A gale warning for all coastal waters including all southeast inshore waters and the central plateau lakes for southwesterly winds. A strong wind warning for the southwest lakes. Minor flood warnings are current for the Upper Huon River and the River Derwent below Meadowbank Dam. A flood watch for the northwest catchments. A warning to sheep graziers is current for most forecast districts. A bushwalkers weather alert for snow for western and central plateau forecast districts. And finally, a road weather alert for snow to 400 metres in parts of the western central plateau, midlands and southeast forecast districts. Tomorrow's forecast now, wind easing with showers across Hobart, Signet, New Norfolk 11. Looking mostly sunny across Launceston and Campbelltown 12 at Devonport. 12 at Burnie and Smithton, Strawn 11. St Helens and Fingal partly cloudy, Swansea 12. Looking ahead to Friday, showers developing about the west and north fine elsewhere. Saturday, showers about the west and far south, Bass Strait Islands as well. And Sunday, showers developing about the west from late morning. Capital cities looking sunny across Brisbane and Darwin tomorrow. Adelaide, a cloudy 15 and 25 in Perth. And on to current temperatures, Hobart mostly cloudy and 6, Launceston partly cloudy and 8 and Devonport partly cloudy again with the top of 8. That's all in weather tonight. Back to you, Joe. Beautiful. Thank you very much for that, Jackie. And that's all from the news team for now. Have a great evening. Thanks so much for your company. We'll see you a bit later with updates. Bye for now.